when did you know you wanted to get into this whole acting field as you're a water polo player? You know, interestingly enough, my sisters um, were auditioning a lot when I was a kid. They were going up to L.A., and my mom would take them up there for whether modeling or acting or commercial auditions. And I always wanted to go with them. I, I always did. I'd, Mom, let me go. But I had practice, or I had training, or I had something water polo or swimming related. So I was never able to go up to, to L.A. with them. And um, I think th that kind of came full circle after the Olympics. I was playing pro. I got a little injured and I, I kind of decided to, to go after that, that childhood dream of mine. Yeah, you, you have uh, tried to do two very difficult things, the challenge of making a water polo team and then, and then the challenge of getting a role. You know, I'm curious how those compare, right? I think in both you feel like you maybe have done everything you're supposed to do and it doesn't always work out the way you want it. Yeah, definitely. You know, <clears throat> with the Olympics, I um... – I mean, I had made the 2005 World Championship team. Um, so I was kind of at a young age. I was 16 or 17, I think, at the time. So I was in the pool of athletes that were relatively in consideration. Granted, we had a, from 2000 to 2012, we had the, the same 10 to 11 core group of guys. You know, the, the Tony, ba Tony Osvedo, Ryan Bailey, Adam Wright, Peter Burrell. So you had this group, Jeff Powers, Jesse Smith, whatever, the list goes on but there was only two or, two or three young guys or maybe in one field player and one center that had a chance to make the team at any given time outside of that core group. Yeah. So um, that it was very competitive for me, you know, in water polo, which is to say when you go over to acting, I just think that there's only a core group of guys that are booking jobs at the high level as well. The, you just work your way into that. And by no means have I gotten into that Talk to your guys, what I'm saying is you try to work your way towards that final 20, 30 group of guys where you're in consideration for some of the bigger, um, I guess, more visible jobs. Yeah, and, and, and we'll come back to some of the water polo stuff. When I think about your acting, and I know it's been, it's been a grind over the last couple of years, it was, it was probably now five or six years ago, you had that first role on Workaholics, and I feel like that was your first thing where it was like yeah. people started to take, to take notice. What's the journey been like to getting that opportunity to now where you're starting to get more and more chances? You know, fortunately for me with Workaholics, I had people within my network that were able to get me um, in front of an agent, and that agent just happened to, to like my look. I was very raw. I was new into acting class. You know, I was, I was doing regional theater and plays and doing everything I could to, to try and learn as much as I could as quickly as possible, right? But I got in front of um, an agent right away and I, I ended up booking my first audition, which was, which was Workaholics. <laughs> it didn't go that way consistently afterwards, let me tell you. There's, there's, it's definitely been a roller coaster. Um, but book, booking Workaholics, especially that show early on, kind of introduced me to a professional set high level comedians. Um, it, we were shooting in Southern California, which was really cool. Um, and I, I worked on the show for about a week. You know, I only had two or three lines, but I, I was there for a week. Um, so it, it gave me that early onset experience that I got to kind of take with me as I started to book bigger and more visible and, and, and better jobs. We're talking with Shea Buckner here, 2012 Olympian, and has now segued into the world of acting. As you progress through these auditions and all of that stuff, you know, and this is obviously largely a water polo audience. I'm curious, there's so much discipline required in water polo. How do those compare? There has to be a certain level of discipline to learn your lines, to know where you have to be in a certain scene, to, to, to stay in shape for whatever the role is. How do they compare in your mind? Yeah, everything you just said really applies. I'd say number one for me has been goal setting. I'm having tangible goals that I can wake up and go after every morning. Um, you know, there's no necessary structure to booking jobs. Auditions come in at random. I could get it the night before, I could get it 12, 12 hours before. So you always wanna, you wanna stay prepared, mind, body, and spirit, right? I wanna be in shape, I wanna be well rested. I wanna be actively in class and working on voice lessons. Um, the same as you would as working on your shot. If, you know, if you're playing at the one spot, you wanna work on going around a shot blocker, right? Or centers are, Post up, you're constantly working on your craft. The same applies, the same applies to acting, you know? And then when you're on set, 
the, the biggest similarity is the team atmosphere. On set, on these big movies, you know, you got some 100, 150 people it takes to get this job done and it all needs to go well. Whether it's lighting or, or even to catering, to the DPs, the photographers, the directors, the assistant directors, the makeup artists, it's, it takes a whole village to get it done. And just like a team, if we don't all, all like function like together and simultaneously like working towards the same objective, we won't get it done. It's not, we're gonna be behind schedule. We're gonna miss shots like in the game. If you don't run the play, coach calls the play and you don't run it, we're not gonna score. <laughs> and then I'm probably getting subbed out if I, yeah. if I shoot. <laughs> I used to like to shoot, so that would happen to me quite often, but yeah. We compare the two again, and you talked about running the plays in water polo, that sort of thing. And in water polo, if you if you do it right, you have the the instant gratification. You you run the six on five correctly, the ball goes in the back of the net, your team scores the goal. In acting, you you may do everything right, but maybe you don't have a sense that you that you did it correctly until you see the finished product or until you see it all come together. How does that compare? Because you feel like maybe you put your best effort forward, but you might not know about it until the finished product is complete. Yeah, I think I think you trust you trust your director, you, you trust your producers, the writer, the script's going to take you there, and then your preparation. You know, it's it's all about the preparation from when you book it, the real work begins. You know, leading up to it, it's hours and hours and hours and hours of, you know, on, on the last movie, the Survive the Night, I probably had 80, 80 or ninety pages of dialogue. So. You go in and they, you got to know your dialogue, you got to know your character, your relationships, your situation, your circumstances. You drop into that, you focus on that, you do your job, and then you, you got to be able to let it go, you know, because I don't know if there's necessarily an objectivity to it anyways. Um, you, you could watch it and think, wow, that was terrible. Um, you know, I, I don't resonate with this acting at all, whereas I watch it and I'm like, oh, I thought I did good there. It, it's, no, it's, it's there's no objectivity to it. It's a very subjective business. So you just trust the work, put in the work, trust it. And then when you get feedback from your director and whatnot, you, you listen and you apply that feedback immediately and, and, and hope for the best. Is it, is it fair to say this is, this is your biggest role to date? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm starring opposite Bruce Willis and Chad Michael Murray. The producers produced The Irishman. They've produced Lone Survivor. Um, they're very prolific producers. The director is a USC film guy who's done 200 movies with Bruce. He's a fantastic director, Matt Eskandari. The producers are George Furla and Randall Emmett. And um, from top to bottom, it's the big, it's for sure. From my part to being part of Chad Michael Murray and Bruce and my other co-stars, it's from top to bottom. It's the, it's the biggest role I've, or opportunity I've ever had. What what was that moment like when when you find out that 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 you're picked for this role that you've gone after? And what was that process like to earn this role? You know, it, there's a bit of duality to it because it's like, yes, yeah, awesome, but then it's like, oh, I got to get to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, I, I really really got to get to work. It's similar to when I made the Olympic team. Like we celebrated for one day. I called my family. It was like, I Terry just told me I made the Olympic team. Now it's like, okay, well, I'm on the Olympic team now. I got to get ready to, to play in London. You know, it was the same for this. I got to get ready to shoot this thing in Georgia because Bruce Willis is going to rock in and be ready to go. You know, Chad Michael Murray, for example, are going to be ready to go. I need to be ready to go. And, and to that end, and, you know, again, we're, we're drawing a lot, a lot of similarities here, but, but I think they're there between sports and, and acting as far as bringing out the best of you. I'd imagine it was, you know, when you're on the same set as those guys you described, Bruce Willis, Chad, Michael Murray, is that, is that a little bit of the same feeling as, you know, going up against Hungary where it's like, you know, they're great and you want to be great? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It is very competitive as well because you are in a scene um, with guys and maybe their character is an alpha, for example, right? You're in a scene where you're both trying to out alpha each other within the written context of the part. And we're not going to just start fighting, but it's very competitive. So yes, like, it, absolutely. You're going up against Hungary. You know what they got. They're going to come with their A game. We better re execute our A game as well, or else we're going to fall short. You know, it has to be interesting. And, and just obviously knowing you for all these years in water polo, I watched that trailer and I'm like hyped. Like 
Shay's in there. He's like threatening Bruce Willis in character, right? But it looks very, very cool. Yeah. Is there a part of you that's like, that's awesome? Or are you like, eh, like I'm playing it cool. Like I'm supposed to be here. I'm in this. This I belong. Oh, it is for sure <laughs> surreal. It's very <laughs> surreal. I, I, <laughs> at no point have I ever been like, oh, I belong here. No, I'm just like, holy cow. <laughs> Dad, I'm with, in a movie with Bruce Willis. I'm the, I'm one of the leads in the movie. Like it's 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 very cool to see your hard work and perseverance pay off. You know, I, I retired in 2013 after the Barcelona World Championships and dove headfirst into this. I've invested a lot of time and energy into this and coaching and like voice work and it's taken a village to get me to this point. So. I'm great. I'm beyond grateful for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to sharing it with everybody. And I'm looking forward to seeing it as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy. Um, I certainly don't feel like I, like, for some reason, arrived or any, sure. anything like that. Yeah. This is this is obviously a tough time to have a movie coming out, right, with, with pandemic and everything. How, how has that altered what what would normally happen as far as releasing a picture like this? Uh, this movie had originally had a, um, a limited theatrical release. So it was going to go to theaters across the country. Um, and we were going to actually premiere at Newport Beach Film Festival. Oh, cool. uh, a couple of the producers are local guys. The director, like I said, went to USC. So we were going to open at Newport Beach Film Festival, which has now been furloughed to, I, I believe, August. Um, yeah. But Lionsgate, the studio behind it, still needs to release release the movie they you know they've, they've got a lot of money and stuff tied up in these movies and they need to distribute them that said i i do hope that um you know it can, it can provide a, a hour and a half or whatever it is hour yeah. of escape of fun of a bruce willis thriller you know and um people are at home so maybe uh those who wouldn't have seen it in theaters now have an opportunity to see it at home which I'm just trying to look at the bright side. Everybody's in this thing together. And it's, it's, it's difficult all around. Um, we shot this thing 10 months ago. Um, yeah. You know, so we, there's no chance you could ever predict, predict that any, anything. So we're just, everyone I think is trying to do, do the best with the hand we're given. How does, and obviously no one has a lot of access to a pool right now, yeah. but as you compare what you were doing to stay in water polo shape versus what you do now, is there a lot of overlap? Are there things you're doing that are that are much different? How does it compare? Yeah, I think um, you know my my background is in water polo. I, I spent my whole life as an aquatic athlete. So when I'm at home, I I have stretch bands everywhere and stuff. You know, st stuff that we're normally doing for rotator cuffs. <laughs> so I'm applying those. I'm doing ab drills. You know, with the stretch bands, and I'm doing. I always constantly have brought that stuff into my workout anyways. A lot of core, water pool is very core dominant. Um, so yeah, I, I think, and then it's just staying active and trying to, when you're allowed to get out for an hour or whatever it is a day, I try to go for a run. I'm fortunate I have a little bike um, on my balcony that I can ride out in the sun. And um, yeah, but as far as like the crossover between my training and, um, and water pool, what I, I kind of grew up on, you know, I don't swim as much anymore. I box a lot. Um, I box five days a week when, when I can. Yeah. Um, run, lots of cardio, tons of cardio. And then the stretch bands are the one that are, I, they've never left me. I do my shoulder work. I still, I got messed up rotator cuffs. So it's, I'm still we're constantly trying to build them up. My, you know, labrum issues and all that stuff from years of water polo. But yeah. Is there a, and, and maybe the script hasn't been written or the story hasn't been told, but is there some sort of, and, and this is based off one of the questions we got, some sort of role that is equivalent to like the Olympics, you know, as you think of, you know, your, your dreams or something you'd like to accomplish? I think it's director based, to be honest. My dreams and my goals are set on um, working with certain directors and, and just creatively. Uh, it's so inspiring to see a lot of the stuff that's out there. Um, as far as like a, a water polo role, I saw that question. I, yeah. I've never, I've never seen a water polo movie, so maybe if it's in the future, um, the, the kid from Pokemon I know is playing a water polo player on a show right now. It's a high school okay. drama, and it's a. But we haven't seen water polo materialize that much in on the big screen. So if it comes up, I'm gonna definitely be calling my my agents to try and get, try and at least give me an audition.
Yeah, for sure. That that's a that's a must. If there if if there's a job you are 100% qualified for, I got it is the crossover. I'm a method actor. I brought. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can handle this one. We're talking with Shay Buckner here. Shay, you've gone through the Olympic process of kind of training and getting ready in that in that what we call a quadrennial, that four year period. You know that the team this year has to wait a year and has to has to kind of continue with that training. As you think on that process and what that was like, how do you imagine the athletes are, you know, and I'm sure you're still in touch with some, you know, whether they're retired or still in the mix, but how do you handle having this thing you were, you were aiming for and now you're being told you have to wait 12 months? Yeah. You know, I can't imagine what these guys are going through. Some of them, it's been an eight year journey. I know we have a relatively young team, but, you know, or, or there's guys that are on their last Olympics, you know, um, I can't imagine what they're going through. But I, I guess, like we always do, you know, at the beginning of a, a new season, you just refocus and, and we adapt. We adapt. Hey, the bright side is um, hopefully they'll have more time together to grow as a young core group of players. And they can spend more time together, develop more chemistry, um, you know, video work, the things you can, the things you can control, you can control, but for all the athletes out there, it's, and a lot of them, you know, the specific training programs to peak at a, a perfect time at the Olympics. And that's been, that's been furloughed. And it's just, it's devastating because I spent eight years trying to make it to that point. And if, if I had found out that it got pushed a year, of course, I'm not going to give up on that dream, but a lot can change in a year or so. Part of you goes, ah, all right, time to knuckle up and, and go again, I guess. You know, it's just, it's, I don't know. I, I send my condolences to all the athletes out yeah. there, but also um, I'm behind them. I support them all 100%. USA Waterpool, all the USA Waterpool athletes. There's still some guys, Chancellor Ramirez and a few uh, guys, um, Bowen, that I played with. I played with sure. a while ago, you know. Um, yeah even seven years ago, they were on the national team with me. Um, so I, I feel for them certainly. And, and it goes back to none of us expected this. There's a lot of people in the world that are, um, are suffering. So we do with the best with the hand we're given, you know, and try and move forward. No, good, good stuff there. And you're spot on. This is just a small, a small part of a much bigger issue that many folks are, are battling before you were, part of the Olympic team, you were in college at USC and, and we've been celebrating school spirit week and different, different days all this week with that home. And yesterday was college day and everyone was trotting out all the gear. And, you know, I was thinking about your days at USC and yeah. part of one of the, one of the all time dynasties in men's water polo at the college mm -hmm. level, you were in at the front end of what became six straight titles. Yeah. Just your memories of that, of that time. And then as you think back on, on being a part of what was just this multi-year juggernaut of water polo. What is that? What kind of comes to mind? It was, um, it was a pretty incredible journey. You know, college is a very special time in my life. I look back on very fondly. It was a, my best friends, you know, his best man at Kyle Wooten's wedding. I played with two other Olympians, Joel Denley and J.W. Krupholtz. We had seven national team players on my college team. We were undefeated in 2008. We, and I think I lost at USC seven games total. <laughs> we, it, it, winning is fun. Like winning is fun. And being at USC as a winner, they, they roll off the red carpet for you with the marching band at the airport when we got home from the, the national championship game. It was so, such a surreal experience. And the whole collective studio bodies behind you, um, you know, our photos are up at the local uh, bar and grill called the 901 Bar and Grill. Yeah. Our, our photos are up in there and they have signed caps. And, um, you know, I, I got nothing but fond memories of college. And it, mostly the, the people I met and the friends I made that are going to be there for a lifetime because of th those experiences. Talking with Shay Buckner here, 2012 Olympian, multiple time NCAA champ at USC. And now an actor in a movie, Survive the Night, coming out here shortly. So keep an eye out for that. You, you've talked about some of the great actors and actresses and directors you've gotten to work alongside. And as you mentioned, some of your former water polo teammates, you know, whether it's a Tony Azevedo or Jesse Smith. Again, going back to similarities between the two, but 
What, what do you learn when you're alongside people that have done it at the very highest level? Are you consciously trying to glean things from them? What do you get out of those experiences? You know, I, Kobe Bryant growing up was my favorite athlete. Um, I, I got to meet him at the 2012 Olympics and walk into the opening ceremonies with him. But um, he, he was such a student of the game, right? And, Although acting isn't necessarily a game, being, that's the one thing I've learned from the guys at the highest level. They're all so prepared. They're intelligent. They're, they're professional. You watch the way they work and you can, you watch it. And it, the only thing I can do is learn. Just like when I would watch, when I first started playing with Tony all those years ago, or Wolf Weigo, way yeah. back when I was like 15 or 16 when I started playing with Wolf, uh, we had a coach named Radko Rudich at the time and I was playing on the national team and you show up at practice and you watch Tony and Wolf going at it with each other and competing at the highest level. All you can do is sit back and then try it on your own. Movie sets, TV commercials, and, and your history as a water polo player comes up. What's the reaction from people? You know, I, I, I try not to lead with it. Um, I, I happen to be 6'3 and have a pretty, <laughs> athletic, pretty athletic build. So it usually people are gonna ask, hey, did, were you an athlete or something? And I want to get jo – it's a, it's a strange thing where I want to feel like I earned it, whereas nobody's get, just giving out roles either way. But I do want to earn it off my, my acting chops and then for it to be discovered later, if that, if that makes sense. Um, but it, it, do, it does totally. come up. It does come up, and, and people are always so receptive and complimentary of me. I think there's this um, – it just, I think hard work and, and discipline goes hand in hand with being an Olympian. Um, and and it's, a ba it's a badge of honor in any way you look at it. People have a certain respect and hold it at a certain regard. The fact that it didn't matter what sport it is, you're an Olympic athlete, you, you demand a certain amount of, of respect for your discipline and your decision making and, and your perseverance and all the things that it goes into becoming an Olympian. So it, it, when it does come up, people are, are very complimentary. Sure, and, and, and to your point, look, being an Olympian might get you a conversation with somebody, or maybe right. they'll talk to you if they wouldn't normally talk to you, but you're not getting 90 pages of dialogue just because you went to the London Games. Actually, at a certain point, they might actually be like, hold on a second, that guy's an athlete? Yeah. yeah. It's a weird, there's a weird dichotomy there because, oh, wait, he's a jock. And I'm not saying that a jock can't act, but they're – you want to, I want to put my best foot forward. And right now my best foot forward is all the work and the effort and the coaches and the team I have around me, that's my best foot forward. Um, and then my past and the achievements I have in my past when they come up, and I, I guess it augments it in a way. It just, it just helps them, not, not before. No, I, I can uh, relate that experience at a very small level, but having done years at the Upright Citizens Brigade in Los Angeles and being the only person that likes sports right. in a room full of people that didn't, didn't know the Super Bowl was the next day. Right. It will, will really trip you out if you've, if you've come up in nothing but athletics. Right. And then you find out you have to have some other, you know, some other place to go with people. It can't just be about everything you used to know. Well, you, exactly. What are you, what are you providing now? Who are you now? You show up at a table read or a producer session with producers. Don't, I'm not talking about what I did seven years ago. I'm talking yeah. about where I am now, how I'm going to execute this job, and what I, can, what I can bring to the role, what I can bring creatively. One thing I will say, though, is when you are on set, um, and you, athletics does come up, you find out that a lot of these guys and girls are, were and are high-level athletes, whether they're yeah. marathon runners. Chad Michael Murray was a big football player. He was a very talented guy. Go back to Kevin Costner, you know, baseball player. I was on NCIS with Mark Harmon, and his dad, I believe, was like a uh, Heisman Trophy winner, and he played football at UCLA. <laughs> so you start to get in these conversations um, with the guys and girls from many levels, and it just shows you that the discipline you learn from team sports and individual sports does transition into acting, and you see it all over the place. It's, and it's that discipline. It's knowing what it takes to work with the team and how to get these goals and objectives met. Now – Outside of your experience, just when the sport of water polo comes up, what, what are people's reactions to that? Do they have typically an opinion on it, knowledge of it? What, what you know, any, any memorable stories when you bring that up? Like did Bruce Willis watch water polo or something? 
90, 95% of the time people are like, oh my God, there's a hardest, <laughs> it's the hardest sport in the world. Do people punch you in the whatever underwater? Are you getting this? They, they start getting real curious what's happening underwater, but it's, it's synonymous with being one of the hardest sports in the world. People are blown away like by water polo athletes. They're blown away. And I'm talking about from Bruce Willis to the, the biggest stars I've ever worked with. They are blown away by the physicality of water polo, the endurance of water polo players and all that stuff. So people receive it very well. It's just, and, and they watch it actually. It, the other thing I found out is like, I watched that sport at the Olympics. Like I watch it. How do I see more water polo? Like, well, in the U.S., we're working on it. In, in Europe, the professional leagues are televised nationally. So we're getting there. We have a water polo professional league and stuff. So hopefully in the next few years, it'll be more, more visible because people like it. They love it. And they respect, they respect the, the physicality and the endurance and, and what it takes to be a water polo player. You're, you're spot on with that stuff. So often people, and this is, I think, the thing the water polo community always struggles with because – in, in conversation, anecdotally, people always have great things to say about it. Even those that aren't, that aren't diehards, they watch it every now and again, they love it, but it hasn't translated into the sport really taking off as a television property or in movies or that sort of thing. So that, you know, remains kind of the quest for all of us here. But it is interesting to hear that so many folks know it and enjoy it. They, yeah, I, it, there's not, I've never heard anyone be like, oh, I don't like watching that sport. I mean, <laughs> people love the sport and it's, it's just about getting it to them and how do we do that and how do we gain more visibility with our sport um, and, and doing stuff even like this, if I can help a little bit to bring attention to water polo and through my movie, I mean, I'm proud to do it because our, the sport gave me so much. It gave me so much from a kid to, to my family, being able to engage with me throughout my entire life, coming to London to the Olympics. Um, I have so much pride to be a USA water polo player. Um, it's just, like, like you were saying, it's just how, how do you gain more visibility or grow it or get access on a, a larger scale? And I, it's yet to be decided, but I, I think we could do it. Well, that's why we're huge fans of your Shay. We just, you know, we're just going to ride your coattails. You just, you just, yeah, just keep yeah. on climbing the ladder. <laughs> We're talking with Shay Buckner. Just a couple of more uh, questions here. If anyone has any questions for Shay, feel free to drop them in the comments. So, you know, we talked about your movie coming out, Survive the Night. And obviously things are a bit touch and go right now with the pandemic. There's not a chance to, to get out and be seen or to, or to do additional theater work, that sort of stuff. But what is down the road for you? Do you have other things you're working on, other, other things you're going after in the next 12, 18 months? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on, I audition regularly. Um, I'm on a show right now. I actually can't say what it is. We were shooting in New York, and the last three episodes of the show got pushed because of the current the current situation. Um, and then I, I'm auditioning. You know, when they come in, I I'm auditioning because guys are starting to um, productions are starting to gear up. They're, yeah, they're, they're anticipating. You know, within the I'd say probably sixty to ninety day window that people will be allowed to go back on set in some form. Um, so we're, we're proactively going after jobs. I'm speaking with directors that I've worked with and writers that I've worked with and, and producers and seeing if there's gonna be a fit somewhere in there for me and my I've great agents that happen to become some of my best friends um, that really fight for me. And they're, they're very proactive in, in getting me and keeping me working. So um, other than that, it's I, I set a goal to come out of this thing better than I went in. So. Yeah, you know, I, I want to get in better shape. I want to go to bed earlier, get up earlier, uh, you know, spend less time on my phone. And there's certain, certain goals that reading more that I set for myself. And they're just personal goals, you know, to really get, come out of this thing and, and hit the ground running what, whenever that happens. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of where I'm at, I, I guess, career-wise. And then, you know, doing the other things that I maybe pushed off. There's certain things that, while you're focusing on trying to get get in another job or because we're job to job. I, you know, it's, I'm not at the place where I have a whole slate lined up for the next three years. I, I am actively pursuing jobs and auditioning and trying to prove myself. I'm still, still a new face, I, you know, and you, you're actively going after it. So then I, I had pushed off writing for a while. Um, you know, I pushed off photography and I actually, fortunately, my girlfriend and I have been hired for a few brands. We just got hired by Urban Outfitters. 
to, oh, to nice. shoot, yeah, to shoot a stay at home campaign. Before that, we shot for a, a brand called Arium. Um, we worked for this brand, uh, Absorb Island. Uh, great after, actually after pool wear, which it's amazing stuff. If anyone wants to check it out, it's, it's really good stuff. But um, just trying to add value when I can is basically what, I, what I'm doing within my, I guess, relative expertise. I'm not trying to go out there and, I don't know, be a sculptor or anything, but I'm <laughs> trying, I'm writing and shooting, sure. and auditioning and yeah. Yeah, that's all stuff that kind of is part of that, you know, acting ecosystem, right? If you can, if you can write for yourself, that's always going to be able to help uh, get get yourself going forward. Um, with, without water polo being played, and we kind of end on this note here, but uh, there's been a lot of work on the mental side of the game, you know, and people working on kind of their mental skills. We talk with people like your old teammate Brian Alexander now, who's the who's the ODP mental skills coach, but. I wanted to ask you about the idea of resiliency because I think it can overlap with water polo and acting. You've, you've, you've talked about going job to job and there are many jobs you don't get, right? You go out, you do, you do the audition, you don't get it. We have a lot of athletes that try to make the team and they don't make it. They get cut or they want to be the starter, but they got to come off the bench or they don't make the Olympics this time. They make it next time. Mm -hmm. How do you handle resiliency? What's been your philosophy to kind of bounce back when things don't go your way? I, I, you know, since I was a young kid, since I, you know, I had a goal at eight years old or seven years old, I wrote it on the back of my window that I wanted to be an Olympian. I saw the 96 Olympics with my dad uh, and told him, I'm going to be an Olympian. He's like, what sport? I'm like, uh, we'll, see, we'll see when we get there. It comes to find out a year later, I started playing water polo. But um, to, to address the resiliency side of it, I made the first world championship team in, in 2005. And I didn't make the Olympics until 2012. So it was years, and, I, and that was at 16, and it was years of being very close. I played on world championship teams, multiple world league teams in between. I missed the 2008 team while I was in college. I came back four years later and started playing. With, with acting, it's, it, it's a no every day. You get told, why not? How too tall? Whatever. There's a million reasons why not. I constantly tell myself why. Why? It's always why, I why did I get in this? I love it. So whatever, if I get a no, it doesn't matter. I'll just come back for the next one. Um, ironically, I do encourage, I've gotten into therapy and been able to talk and really help well round my, my mental capacity. We worked with a guy named Peter, Peter Harbaugh back uh, when we were training sure. with Terry Schroeder in 2012. Yep. And it was the, my first introduction to any sort of I guess, I don't know how you phrase that, mental um, fortitude or working on your, your mental side of things. Because, yeah, I, you know, mind, body, and spirit is what it breaks down to. And all three need to kind of connect for you to be successful as an athlete, I think, as an actor. So I started exploring that and, and working on myself and bettering myself. And, and, and that fortitude takes work. It's a day-to-day -day thing. It's not a... Once you have it, you'll have it forever. I think we proactively work at it like you work at anything else. You know, you, you have a goal. You, you set that goal on your wall, and some days you are going to fall short. But you go back to that goal. Why do you want it? What are you going to do for it? What's it going to take to get it? And you remind yourself, and you get back to work. You know, there's a quote. It's hard to beat somebody who never gives up. Just don't give up. Just keep fighting. Because you are, there are going to be failures. There will be failures. I fail every day. I get told no every day. I audition <laughs> and get told no every day. The movie you're seeing is the result of, I can't tell you how many auditions. Do you, you know, and I got one. And what a reminder that, holy cow, it was worth it. The Olympics in 2012 was worth it. All the hours of training, the no's, the missing teams, the getting left out, the bad shots, the missed penalties, like, the, you know, the lost sprints, the thousands and thousands of hours of swim sets for Robert Lynn or when I was playing in Greece or whatever. It's the same in acting. I get no's and failures every day, but you remind yourself why you're doing it and why you set those goals in the first place. And, and it'll carry you. That's great stuff, Shay. And I, and I love the idea of finding, and again, this is cliche, but finding your why and then really anchoring yourself to that and, and, you know, in your case, your, your why for a long time was water polo, right. and now it's become acting, but they both served as kind of the focal point to allow you to achieve your dreams. 
I set my, I set my goal. I, I know where I'm going. I've committed to it. And I'm not going to stop. I'll, and, and, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to go and where I want to go and achieve these dreams. But God willing, I will get there. And I am not going to stop until I do. I accept the speed bumps and, and, and whatnot along the way. And unfortunately for me, I have a family behind me and a, a great support group. Um, and, and back to what I was saying, if, if as an athlete, you're feeling down, it's, it, it's okay to talk to people because you're not alone. There's a lot of points in your career where I, you know, I transferred from Berkeley to USC after we, we lost the national championship. And I, I felt pretty down about that, but it was okay to open up and, and talk about it. Because we are going to experience that stuff as student athletes with grades and deadlines and, and, and tests. And there's so much, to, a lot of times it feels a little overwhelming. Like you may not be doing a good job or doing enough. And what I'm saying is encouraging people to open up and talk and, and talk with their loved ones or, or talk to a professional or whatever to get out there and seek, seek that help you need to keep going after those dreams. Okay, awesome stuff. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I think you have all of us fired up here and ready to go uh, to, to uh, get after whatever yeah. it is we're working on. I Survive the night. Uh, I, I yeah. I'm, I'll tell you, later they open pools. I'm, I'm going to Orange. I got Orange uh, High School just down the street. Um, we're in Old Town Orange right now, and I just want to go hop in that pool and throw a ball around. I'm inspired. It's getting sunny. It's so hot. It's a perfect yeah. time for water polo. I also want to say I'm sorry to all those kids out there, like J.O.'s. Oh, yeah. what, a big, what a big part of my life that was and how fun it was. My cousin's one of them. He, he's a water polo player. I just want to say, say my condolences to all the kids out there that were really looking forward to getting together for that. Um, keep fighting. Keep pushing. It, it'll be back, and you'll be back, you know, better than ever. Yeah, yeah, we're hoping that. Jo's right now rescheduled for November and December, so hoping that holds. And looking forward to getting everyone back in the pool real soon. And uh, looking forward to seeing you on the screen here. Survive the night coming out soon. What's the What's the best way for folks to try and check this out if they want to watch it? So it'll be on uh, video on demand, Amazon Prime, across all streaming platforms. Not Netflix or any of the premium ones, but Amazon uh, Video on Demand. Whether you have Time Warner or Spectrum or sure, uh, it'll, so it's all video on demand. It'll go across. It'll release on the 23rd, which I believe is a Friday. Um, Good stuff. So, yeah, make sure you check that out on demand. Uh, it's uh, your favorite water polo Olympian, Shea Buckner, Bruce Willis, Chad Michael Murray. That's a, that's a heck of a trio. Uh, we're looking forward to checking it out. Uh, best luck to everything you got you got coming uh, down the pike here. We're excited for you. We're for you. Looking forward to uh, wishing you all the best. Thanks, Greg. And good luck to all the guys, uh, you know, the team and stuff. And I'll be watching as well. I'd love to stay in touch. So. Thank you so much for your time and for everybody who tuned in. Excellent. All right, Shane, take care, bud. All right. That sounds good. Thanks.